personality but uh, they couldn't have been nicer to us and there was kind of a kind of a camaraderie due to the fact that danger danger and, and kiss were all you know from new york i was the only one that wasn't from new york basically as far as uh, the danger danger group so there there was just a you know something that uh, that was it's definitely a bonding factor um but gene and paul were great i mean we just learned so much from them that was but it was I guess I wasn't so concerned when I was a kid it was, as far as what you know, the rock and roll lifestyle might be like or the girls and the whatever. Um, there may have been some of that going around, but you know, for me, it was just about, I just always loved the music and just the energy of the rock and roll. And that's what drew me to it um, in the first place. So just getting a chance to, I mean, that was the first concert I ever saw was, uh, was Kiss on the Destroyer tour. So that's when I was in eighth grade. So maybe the age of 13 or 14. So you know, seeing this, that particular band and that on that tour was like, oh, this is what I want to do. You know, there was that epiphany of like, I've been playing guitar and I would learned how to play from Ace Freely and listen to the Kiss records, but then seeing them kind of cemented that. So for, if that was, what, 1976 to fast forward to 1990, as I'm great with math, was that 24 years later to be, you know, uh, hanging out and then just shooting the breeze and then wa you know, we'd watch their show every night. We me and Bruno were like little kids on the side of the stage, just soaking it up, you know, really, really enjoying it. So, uh, yeah, and, and Gene's just a bit, he's obviously, you know, initially a very intimidating guy. The, the first time that we met, he, uh, we, I think the, some, the gig was somewhere in North Carolina, maybe, and uh, our, our band, you know, the band management had flown down to uh, be with us and get things settled for the tour. And we're in our dressing room, which is at, you know, your, your, your basic sports arena, so it's some, you know, dressing room for athletes. And we're, uh, and I'm standing nearest the door and Gene Simmons, you know, comes in and just kind of stands there at the doorway and goes, hello, gentlemen. And I, I stick my hand up very eagerly and say, hey, Gene, you know, and he says, wait till I'm ready. Okay, now, you know, just, he wanted to establish that, you know. Um, but yeah, it was just, uh, it was, uh, yeah, many, many fond memories, but they, we learned a lot just seeing how professional Gene and, and Paul were and how there was no drugs or alcohol ever involved with those guys. Um, and that's why they're still in the business to this day. You know, unfortunately, Ace and, and Peter didn't follow the same path. And so, you know, that kind of sealed their, uh, their future, unfortunately. And I'm, and I'm huge fans of those guys. So I hope they're doing well and, and staying well, you know, so. I'd have to, I, you know, there's, there's, it's impossible to pick, but as far as my foundation and what I based so much on, I'd have to say Steve Lukather, but it's one of those things where I didn't get into Jeff Beck until years later. I was, I, I appreciated his, you know, big, I had older brothers that were big fans of the Yardbirds and that were big fans of Jeff's, the, you know, the early Jeff Beck group stuff. And then of course the seventies fusion uh, records like Wired or, uh, and uh, Blow by Blow, um, and I liked those records, and I was exposed to them, but it didn't connect with me at that point as heavily as it would as it would later. But it was Steve Lukather who maybe took influence from Jeff and Larry Carlton and, and a variety of other players and kind of did his own thing. But it was Steve's energy and his uh, his passionate way of playing and his very specific note selection and the placement of the note and where he placed it within the groove and how he and Pacero, Jeff, Jeff Pacero really locked in groove wise was really inspiring and influential to me and still to this day i think i've probably stolen more from him than anybody is but then as you as you keep playing over the years then you start drawing from a variety of other people but as far as somebody that i could really cite as being my main influence it would have to be steve lukather i mean ace freely preceding him and ted nugent preceding him and then guys like Carlton and Ford and Mike Stern after the fact. And then, of course, modern day with Satriani and Vi and, of course, Eric Johnson, who's, you know, one of my high benchmarks, especially as far as tone and virtuosity goes. Um, but then I have to say, seeing Jeff Beck for the first time, it wasn't until 1999 when I saw Jeff. And again, I'd been aware of his records and I liked them. I thought he was great, but it was something that I didn't continually go back to. But people kept telling me, you got to see him live. You got to see him live. 
And so I finally did. I went and saw him live in 99 when he started coming back and doing shows with Jennifer Batten. And I had never been so moved by a guitar performance in my life. And I'd seen, you know, quite a few people at that point. And I was just kind of at a juncture in my life where I wasn't really listening to guitar music that much. But again, it, people kept saying, go see him. And I was actually, at, there's a, a, a really large vintage guitar show that happens annually here in Dallas called the Vintage Dallas Vintage Guitar Show. And I was there, you know, I was probably doing a performance at some point, and there was these two beautiful girls walking around saying, would you like tickets to Jeff Beck? And I, I, I kind of looked skyward, and I went, okay, God, I get it. I'm going to Jeff Beck. And again, th I told you the outcome. It was just, it was truly the best guitar performance I'd ever witnessed. And still to this day, I've seen him several times since, and he keeps getting better. That I think the Emotion and Commotion record is his best record. So he keeps raising the bar as far as, the level of emotional expression that the guitar is capable of, but that we're still, we're still kind of scratching the surface. I think at least that's how I've felt about myself personally and uh, what he's, what he's doing and raising the bar is just really, really inspiring.